All right, to review where we are. We did a text blocking sketch. We came up with black type, but I decided to change my black type a little bit, change the MAN. So in Illustrator, I recomposited it. I saved this image as what's called a test file, like this. And if I save it as a JPEG, it has white in the background. But if I save it this way as a PNG out of Photoshop, save a copy as a PNG with the background turned off and it's only black shapes, do it to the desktop, I'll call this test2. If you bring the, it into Illustrator, and you image trace it, you always have to open up the image trace window and open up advanced settings, and you always have to say ignore color. Even if you bring it in as a PNG with no white pixels at all, because it's the black and white logo mode, it's still gonna trace the white as the background. So in order to avoid that, you have to hit ignore color. So that works, and you can save it as an SVG or an EPS. I'm starting to use SVG more because that's supported by, by more freeware. But you can see I have the SVG here and it's perfectly clean. And I have an EPS here, but I don't want to open up the EPS. So it used to be the EPS was supported by preview. It isn't anymore. So now if I go into Photoshop and I bring in the EPS, drag and drop it in as a smart object. I hold down option to grow it and then I can move it into place and I can hit control T because remember it will scale perfectly with whatever I have, right? So there is my EPS. The freeware version, if you save it as a test file PNG like this, so see that this is vector, or this is rasterized. You can see the pixels. And if I want to clean it up as a vector, this is another way without Adobe Illustrator that you can do it. You can see it in the assignment. Refresh. It's called Vectorizer AI. If I open that up, I can drag that PNG without the background in. You can see no white background. Say OK and it will also trace it as a vector, just like Illustrator does. I just can't modify it in all the ways I can in Illustrator. So basically, I redrew the Illustrator one to have that star, but this one, I don't actually need to redraw it. If you look, that's what it was. This is what it traces it as. I like that opening a little bit better. So if I wanted this, I just say download, and I'm going to download it as an SVG to the desktop. Or we'll go to my downloads folder. So that's the freeware way to do it. So any way you can get vectorized black type is fine. And because we're using Photoshop, it doesn't matter if it's an EPS or an SVG that you bring in, as long as it's only black shapes. I can put it in its place. And it's a vector smart object now. Nice and clean. So right now I have two vectors stacked up on top of each other. Right. And maybe I like that. Gives me a little bit extra bold. You see? So there's lots of ways to play with this type. Now the important thing is that these are vectorized and they stay vectorized. So I am now going to save this as my black type. Design. 
And I'm just going to save it as a PNG. So I have to save it as a copy to the desktop. Lots and lots of layers, right? Working between these programs, setting it up. I think it went into my folder instead of onto the desktop. Let me make sure. So there it is. So that is my black type design. It was designed as a vector, so now it's perfectly clean within the 18 by 24 by 350 pixels per inch. But you see how doubled up, maybe it's not exactly what I want. So you still have to place it and figure out what you want. So I'm going to use this one, this one at the top. I'm going to erase the other type layers now like all these that got me there. So all I need is my black type and my spot illustration. So there's my spot illustration and my black type. Now what do I, I don't even need my text blocking anymore, right? So it is interesting. Let's see if I can make it match my text blocking just by rotating it a little, stretching it. Because it's a smart object, it can survive this stuff. So I have two options now. Yeah, that or this. This is why I'm not I'm not a huge fan of layout because these are hard decisions. Maybe I'll stretch it just a bit, move it up, because you can still even after it's a vector you can still play with its type setting. Hit Command T, hold down Shift to make the type bigger, place it in different ways. Actually, I kind of like that. Close the gap a little. Maybe stretch it a bit. So just remember, you're not locked in. This gives you lots and lots of options. Okay. Can tilt it, can scale it. Stretch it just a little bit taller. I'm just using the arrow keys to shift it where I want it. All right, and then what if I wanted to change the man some more? I can always just select that, duplicate it, and that rasterizes it, right? And then I can play with stretching it, working with it in a different way. Like if I like that placement. Now, what's the problem? Now I need to make it into a vector again, right? So. Let's do that. I'm going to rasterize this. I'm going to get rid of the man before. So this is when you're kind of stuck in the weeds with layout, like trying to get it to, to really read clearly. But if I like this now, that's why text blocking is important. It kind of gives you a sense of, of where you wanted things. Now I need to turn this into my black type solution. So what do I do? I'm going to do it with the freeware this time. I'm going to save it as a PNG, save a copy. I'm going to call this test three because I've been doing this several times to the desktop as a PNG with the background turned off. I'm going to bring it into this program, right? So test three, here it is. I'm going to say, okay. I'm going to let it do its thing, and then I'm going to download it as an SVG. 
and I can get rid of these other SVGs, move them to my trash, but I never want you guys to delete your trash. Okay, so now let's look at it. It's a different solution, right? But still perfectly clean as a vector. This is vectorizing. And then we're going to download it as an SVG with all the defaults. And it's going to go to my downloads folder. And here it is. And then I'm going to mark that purple. And then I'm going to bring it into Photoshop. And now I have a vector solution of this. And it should already be basically sized. I just need to place it. If I need to grow it a little bit, I can. There we are. All right, so now... Now I have my vector black line art. I don't need anything else besides that. My white background and my spot illustration. Okay, so I'm going to save it there. This is my poster type design. Now I can do a quick screen grab of that or save it as a JPEG as my black type. And I'm going to post this to the assignment. Bless, bless, bless you, bless you. So as long as you show your black type as the first part of this assignment, it doesn't matter to me if your spot illustration is in it or not. But it should be organized and placed, right? So I'm going to bring that in, just that screen grab. And this is my black type design. So that's my final black type design. So that's the first requirement. To do a good job, I showed you text blocking, show you some of my process there, but this is the first thing required for the assignment, the black type design. The next step is to color the type. But we want to color the type knowing what the background of our poster is going to be. So we have to work backwards a little bit. First, we're going to design a background behind our black type, and then we'll decide what the color of the type should be to go with the background. So if I go to Pixabay, you can design a background any way you want. You can composite it. You can paint it. I'm going to go ahead and log into Pixabay and just look for poster background. Because these are all ones I can composite with if I want. And you see a lot of, a lot of variations. There'll be a lot of kind of scrapbook ones like this. And I can download the largest raster file possible. And of course, I'm going to make it my own, right? So I have many, many options here. This one's kind of cool, a little op art. And so basically, you can download and composite. Let me show you what that would look like. Open it up in downloads. I'm going to bring those in to my Photoshop file. First, this one. Just drag and drop it in. Use your compositing skills, rotate it, stretch it, holding down shift, make it fill your background, put it behind your text, right? Then I can bring this one in, the up art, get those more patterns. A more pattern is the uh, kind of optical illusion that the computer gives when it's showing contrasted pixels at, at different different uh, widths and heights. Okay, So that one's kind of cool. Now here's how I customize a background, just compositing. I can just play with blending modes one on top of the other, right? Just like we did early on in the class. Like this could be an interesting background. 
So where the black 